When artificial intelligence is not a good solution for our problems. I was reading a book by Gary Marcus about the limits of artificial intelligence and basically I got a number of doubts and in this video I want to talk about three things that I've learned. It turns out one thing I haven't reflected a lot in the past is that the way that AI learns today about doing a task is learning only from data. And basically what, what it's doing is finding correlations in the data. And that's very different than the various ways with which human beings actually learn uh, and go about the world. And one example, this situation where you're trying to predict how much of a drug you have to give a patient after you have spent 60 days to change the dose of this drug. Now, what the author was saying is, if there is not a pattern in the data, in the 60 days data, if there is not a correlation basically in this data, AI is basically useful, can find a way to predict which amount of drug can be given to the patients at day 61, day 62, or day 63. So pretty interesting, it's basically kind of a fallacy. Another thing that the book was saying and uh, really made me thinking is this inability of natural language processing today to understand the negation. For example, if you say find an author who is not Ernest Hemingway, the AI will find everything related about Ernest Hemingway because that's the correlation of which it focused on. Basically the ability to give to the natural language processing the negation concept it's so easy for a human being to do and it's still not reachable even though uh, there are lots of things like deep learning and there was an hypothesis uh, within the book that deep learning was in a dot to solve that problem. And by the way, if this is the first time that you join this channel, I talk often about the various elements that compose AI. Deep learning is a subsector of machine learning and machine learning is a subsector of artificial intelligence, broadly speaking. The third thing that I wanted to point to your attention is this other idea inside the book that in biological systems, particularly in human beings, is emerging that intelligence is partially pre-built and partially learned. And whereas in current machine learning uh, slash AI, there is this idea that all the intelligence needs to be learned. And so the systems are designed to learn end-to-hand -end solutions. Basically, they know nothing about something and they have to learn the entire task. That's, for example, the case of DeepMind, various type of games, you know, the various AlphaGo that you have heard. The game doesn't know anything, the, the machine doesn't know anything, and then learns to beat the man. Basically, this approach, it's not necessarily mimicking what um, human beings are doing, and it seems that at the biological level, we already have some concepts that are ingrained in our DNA, if you like. And so the brain is already prepared to start learning from a fundamental coding, basically, that is already in there. That I find very interesting, and uh, quite frankly, I got a little bit scared. A little bit scared because most of the uh, commercial news that I read and I see, you know, they always based on most of the new thing, or the new thing, something new is happening, and they make it always looking like a great achievement as uh, come to the world. But actually, the magnitude of these challenges, so what I told you before, if there is no correlation, there is no AI, negation, no, no ability to go into negation, and um, the fact that there is no pre-built intelligence at time, and, and there is no way to combine the ability to learn with the pre-built intelligence at this point, it's kind of puzzling. Who knows if 10 years from now we have made uh, a lot of progresses in AI. So I wanted to share this with you. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.